All right, I should be, I should be live. Let me know if um, you can hear me in the chat. The audio's good. Starting one minute late. I apologize. We will wait a couple seconds just to. Oh yeah, while while we wait for people to confirm if my audio's good. Once again, the best, the best bubbly flavor. Oh, this is gonna taste angelic. All good. Thank you, Professor G. Yes, a couple minutes late, had to push back the stream. Um, we're just going to call this user Revenge, because Mjolnir? Or maybe it's Mjolnir's Revenge, uh, which is the name of Thor's Hammer. Why are my streams always at like one? Does NVIDIA always get your mornings? Well, I mean, I'm not sure what part of the world you are in, but it is a Sunday for me. <laughs> so <laughs> NVIDIA definitely doesn't get my uh, weekend mornings. I mean, uh, it's not... Uh, Super relevant, but I'm a, I'm an avid runner, um, and I was running a race this morning, which is why I was a little bit delayed. Here, let's turn off. Uh, how do I bookmarks? Um, hide bookmarks bar. So yeah, this is my this is my Strava, and uh, there was a holiday fun run this morning. And yeah, that's what I was doing, running through Toronto. Came second place, massive PB. So we are on a massive endorphin high right now, oxytocin, endorphins coursing through my veins. It's gonna be fantastic. And yeah, usually, I think the last time I streamed, or the last time I streamed was, was it a Thursday night? But like one, on the Sunday stream last week, I think I had done like a 20 or 30K run in the morning. So usually I run in the mornings, and that's why. Uh, you know, Alan Turing is uh, one of my heroes. He was a massive runner as well. So anyways, not important. What are we doing today? This is stream number four. Actually, do I have all the, all the links to all the streams here? We do not. Let's go, let's go add one right now. Um, this is stream number three, Jelly Live stream. Or no, this is number four, but we did number three in the past. And I think it's in the... Uh, copy this link. It is in the description of this live stream right now, but it's not updated here. Commit changes. Um, yes, so we've done that. And a lot of updates since the last stream. So the last stream, we struggled to think about how we were going to have a comprehensive combinator tree. Actually, I'm skipping ahead. So for those that are tuning in for the first time, Jello is a Python script wrapper around the Jelly language, which is a esoteric array language that uses Unicode symbols dissimilar from BQN and APL. And so this program basically enables you to write keywords that translates them into the Jelly atoms. There's a little bit of a trace, and most importantly, it builds this combinator tree to help teach you about combinators. If you would like to know more and you haven't caught the other streams, you know, check the, and actually let's uh, taskbar, let's, um, set up this hide taskbar so that we get more real estate. Um, oh yeah, also too, uh, I was on a podcast recently. If you're interested, I will put this in. Thank you, Mjolnir's, Mjolnir's, Mjolnir's Revenge. We're gonna call you M Revenge because it's easier. If you guys wanna check out, this is Software Unscripted. It's hosted by Richard Feldman who is the creator of the rock programming language. He's the most recent guest on ADSP, which I guess, yeah, while we're at it, plug, plug all the ADSP. Um, this, is my, this is my podcast with Bryce, fellow NVIDIAN. And also to, I guess I should put the podcast links in the description. Arraycast, we have yet to talk about Jelly. Um, it's not really a, oh yeah, uh, it's not, yeah, so it's not a rock podcast, but it is a uh, podcast hosted by the creator of the rock language. And it really should be named unofficially like the rock programming language podcast because 70%, 80% of the time they're talking about programming language things, but like in the, with respect to the rock programming language. Anyways, all the podcasts, all the things, check them out. Um, and yeah, so since the last stream, since stream number three, when, when was stream number three? Was it Thursday night? Uh, two days ago, 
Today is Sunday. Maybe it was Friday. So it was either Thursday or Friday. We were trying to, you know, build out this recursive thing. We struggled. Uh, but since then, I have come up with a really nice algorithm. It was actually inspired by a couple folks in the chat that were saying, you know, could you do this with a, a 2D matrix? And what is the, um, you know, so let's, let's take a screenshot. I don't have a name for this algorithm yet. I, you know, maybe folks in the chat can come up with a good one. Let's copy and paste this. Um, and also too, once again, skipping ahead, what are we gonna be doing today? We are going to be, I'm gonna highlight this algorithm. So, uh, you know, to do today, this stream's probably not gonna be a super long one. It'll be, you know, two to three hours. Probably, a, yeah, no more than like two and a half hours max. Um, we are going to recap maybe name uh, this uh, new combinator tree algo. Uh, then we're going to add the top 10 tests, which is actually let's let's do that. Uh, top 10 is a repo of mine. Mm -hmm. which houses 10 of my favorite programming problems. Um, and I currently have a one-liners file, which I actually have all the solutions to uh, these problems in Jello and Jelly. So, but we're gonna, we're gonna redo these live and add them to my unit tests, because currently I think I only have two of these in my unit tests. Um, and if we are successful in going through these, we are gonna go over to Jellyfish. I've already implemented my first custom primitive in, um, in Jelly, which is basically, this is a uh, n wise reduction where n is fixed to two. So pretty simple. Basically, I just copied the reduced cumulative code from Jelly and then hard coded this to two, pretty straightforward. But uh, I also want partition, which is a primitive that doesn't exist in Jelly, and it, it only exists currently in Wiwa. Um, it's, not the, it's not the APL partition. But anyways, we'll get to this later. First things first, recap the tree algo. So if we go over here, um, let's do this. Yeah, let's do this. And, and also, yeah, feel free to ask any questions in the chat. Um, and... I'll be happy to answer them. So basically the way that this works is you, we are gonna process things. First we do separators, AKA things that are represented by an S. So you basically, you split this string on the S's. Actually, I guess technically if we're gonna do this, do it straight down the middle. So then we've got, we've got one, two, three partitions. Then you're going to do each one at a time. So after you split on separators, the next thing you do is quicks. And whenever you evaluate one of these things, basically you store the index of where each of these arities, quicks, and separators is. And then every single time you basically remove one of these and replace it with the average of the two indexes. So this would be zero, two, four, six, eight, etc. So when you're processing the first separator uh, partition, you're gonna look for quicks, you find a quick, the two indexes here are gonna be four and six. So you're basically gonna draw a left one of these things here at the four, a right one of these things on the six, you're gonna fill it in between and then you're gonna put the name of this at the average of sort of your start and your end. Four and six is gonna be five. And then you basically keep track of all of these starts and ends, and every time you add one, you increase the level. And then basically what you're gonna end up with is this like matrix of these things all over the place. You know, it looks like this. And then when you move to the next section, you're gonna do this. And so every once in a while, you're gonna be combining like this B. And so you just take the maximum of the levels, which is gonna be, you know, here and here, and then you just take, you know, these two points and bada bada, except technically it's gonna look like this. And then you go over here. And, uh, and then once you have all this stuff, so basically you're doing a bunch of, you know, 
you're making your way down and you're scanning right, you're filling in these lines. And then at the very end, all you do is you basically, you scan up every single one of your columns and anytime you meet this, you know, sort of right bracket or left bracket, you basically start filling in the dots until you hit something, which is basically what happens here. So you can see the three places here, here, here. You basically, you find one of these corner pieces and you start filling until you hit something and you're good to go. So basically it starts off with like, you know, separate on separators, process quicks, then you do this right scan and then afterwards you do this like up scan. So I don't know what a good name for this is. It's not really recursive um, because you split on separators and then you just process each partition that is separator separated and then you just sort of work your way through. Uh, and then whatever is returned, so like basically you build this piece up first, then you build this piece up, and then anything that's after the final separator will be evaluated. So at the end of this, this will be a one, this will be a two, and this will be Q11. So you'll end up with a one, two, Q11. And actually no, uh, yeah, and then the two Q is gonna evaluate to a one, so this will become a one. So then you just end up with one, 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 and that's just gonna be BBB. And at the end of the day, the name of this, if we change the color, you basically, you look for the leftmost combinator on this diagonal. And uh, that's gonna be the name. So if we, if we go back to our photo uh, over here, it actually doesn't show the name right now, but it will. So let's go to, uh, clear this, and if we search for flat, you'll see now that I've added it such that it does have the name here, which is just five Bs in a row. So basically anything on the inside here is ignored. Um, and that's about it. It's pretty magical. I think, I mean, you can, uh, if we clear this, you can add an each in here, and that's not going to do much. Uh, it's not going to change anything, but you can, t ooh, look, there's a bug there. So that should be filled in. I am not sure why that is not filled in. Here, let's go. Let's go add a bug. We're not going to fix that right now. There's a couple bugs with this, but it still, it still works pretty well. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, issues. Oh, yeah, enhanced trace skipping. That's something we're going to do at some point. Uh, bug uh, missing vertical ellipsis. Copy paste the photo. We'll fix that later. Um, and so the first thing actually I want to do is the, honestly the main reason I'm pretty busy today, but the main reason I wanted to do this stream is because I have a bunch of these things that in the past streams we've built up and I want to go through and show that they, at least most of them, I know one of them doesn't work, but um, I want to basically d delete these tabs. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So let's do this one first. So this is iota chunk five reverse each. So if we go here, we clear this, um, and this is, this is what, on 10? So 10 iota chunk five reverse each. And sure enough, delta P H1B. So this means this is the delta P combinator. The first thing that's evaluated is this uh, quick. And the, H, the H1 stands for quick is just a fancy word in this case for higher order function. So the H stands for higher order function. And the subscript one means that it's returning you a higher order function with arity one. So like, because this is a reverse each, the function that this forms is a unary function. Um, you can see that before, didn't work. Now, exactly what we wanted. So we can delete this tab and move on. Um, let's see, this might be the one that doesn't work. So this is a plus times uh, pi uh, monadic separator scan, and it's just a sequence of ones and zeros. So we go one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, one, 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 and it was plus times right, so I think this one might be broken. So what do we expect? We expect phi one. So yeah, this one is broken. So we gotta add a bug for this. And the reason is that, 
this is the only one that doesn't work, I think, um, of the ones that I have open. The reason is that because of this monadic separator, even though this is a monadic chain, it actually wants you to evaluate the first um, link here, is I think what they call it, uh, as a dyadic chain, not a monadic chain. So even though there's one argument, because scan is a quick that is expecting a binary function, I believe it forces this to be evaluated dyadically, which is not something that uh, Jello does at the moment. Um, and so we will go add that as a bug as well. Um, issues, new issue, bug, uh, scan wants first link to be evaluated dyadically. Put the photo. Labels, bug, boom. And we can close that one now. So this one, this is the, the fancy one. So this is our, actually kind of what we were doing already. So instead of, previously I was typing in, this is the longest contiguous in increasing uh, sequence. I used to be going one, two, one, two, three, four, and then one, two. So that's what I was doing before. And then it's gonna be a deltas, uh, greater than zero, dyadic separator, plus times uh, right, monadic separator, scan, max r. So we want this one to be delta p, phi one, h, b, b. Uh, sure enough, delta p, phi one, h one, b, b. Um, but note that I realized that I can actually build this up without having to type it in. If I just type the lengths of the iota sequences I want, so if I go two, four, three, then I can add the uh, iota and then flat. And that basically gives us iota sequences for each of our values, two, four, and three, and then we can just flatten it, uh, which is a little bit nicer. And then note that this is the primitive that, that I've added to Jellyfish. So this, tech, this right here is jelly code, but my little algorithm advisor says, uh-oh, you can actually shorten this by one character by using prior. Um, and so if I go less than prior, um, now I get rid of my little warning. And this is the current, actually, is this the current? This looks slightly different, uh, right, because the other one that we were looking at has an add one at the end. But still, this all works. And we can now delete this as well. So next up, iota chunk five times scan each. So this is almost identical to iota chunk five reverse each but now we've got two quicks back to back. Um, this one's expecting a dyadic function, this one's expecting a monadic function. The quick scan with the dyadic function is gonna form, so this is gonna be H1, H1, uh, delta PB. So similar to what we've seen before, so this is gonna be uh, 10 iota chunk five times scan each. So we expect to see two H1s a delta P, why? And there is only one B, yeah. Um, and so, you know, this is all working, fantastic. Uh, next one, we just saw this one, except there was an add one at the end, yeah. So we, we do an add one, and this is exactly it, right? We've got, ooh, actually, no. So this one is the each one. So this one is the one that has a little bit of a bug, right? So I thought you would have needed to do iota each, but iota just works on a list of integers uh, anyways, so this is almost identical. 2H, 2Hs, B, 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 and then phi 1, H1. Um, so the only thing we're missing is this here. We've already logged a bug for that. Delete it. Uh, combinatory logic, fine. And this is not actually anything. So this is actually what I just tried to, uh, oh, this is what I was describing earlier, is the kind of algorithm of, you know, separate on separators, process quicks, and then, you know, do a write scan to fill these things in and do a write. And actually, we can go take a brief look at this code. Zoom out a little bit. And so I added, I added this class called grid that basically um, has what we're talking about. So this is the fill in vertical bars. Kind, well, not what I want, kind of an ugly piece of code, but basically we're looping through the columns, and then for each row in the column, starting at the bottom, 
we are you know storing the character here and if it's in the start or end so note these are the ones that define the edges of our little brackets and these, so like these these are the points where we're going to need to fill in vertically if our uh, except why why am i doing this very silly um, c so we could that's a little small optimization so you know we've got this found uh, and actually it shouldn't be find lr it should be find start end uh, and actually let's actually you know just no need to be cute here. So if it starts off as, you know, not having found it, and if you find it, you set this to true, and then for the rows above this, um, if, if you found it, you come in here and check, is it blank? And if so, then we're gonna put something in it. Otherwise, if you hit anything other than a blank, you wanna break out of this. And actually, does that explain our bug? It does because, so does anybody see what the bug is here? Probably not. But what's happened is it's found a left right and then immediately stopped. And that's not great because it misses this one. So you can have a case where there's multiple of these. So we actually don't want to break. Um, we want to set this back to false. And that's the bug fix. Woohoo! All right. Uh, ooh, I've got a bunch of code. These are all just comments, slight cleanup. All right, so let's just uh, commit it all. And we're gonna go bug, recycle, small cleanup plus fixes. And then we go to our bugs again. And we grab this, put that there. Uh, this is gonna fail because we need to grab the new link from the readme. Now we push this and if we come back here, this is gonna be closed, fantastic. Fantastic, folks. All right. Um, and so yeah, this fills in the vertical bars. Um, this adds each of the mini, you know, when you, when we're looking at, where's Jello, Jello. When we're looking at each one of these little horizontal lines, um, and the label that all hap that's all considered a subtree. So there's some special cases when you only want like a vertical bar, but in every other case, first it's going to check, do we need to add a level? to our grid, because the grid only starts off as two rows. And so it'll add that. And then otherwise, um, it basically comes through, calculates the middle where the label's gonna go, and then we already know the start and the end, so we just fill stuff in. You know, start, fill it with the, the start, uh, AKA, you know, this guy. Start, end, middle, horizontal, vertical. So we're just basically filling all this stuff in, and uh, pretty straightforward. And so once we have this, basically anytime we just know we need to add one of these, we add them. And then at the very end, we just fill this in. And this CCS is the combinator chain sequence. This is what gets us the name of our combinator that's here, which is just basically, you basically, for each of these rows, strip the leading white spaces, take the first two characters, filter out all of this garbage, and then you're left with the letters H1, B, B, uh, you know, del Delta, et cetera. And... Um, we want to remove the H1s. So basically, yeah, you just you strip, you join, you take the first two characters, which is why this is called first two. You get rid of all this garbage, aka no bars, and then while there's an H1, you gotta delete it. And uh, technically, do I have a replace all function? Um, and why? Yeah, there we go. And why? Um, let's go to utols. Replace all. 
Yeah, this is only for a, a single element, though, so that's not going to work. Um, I mean, that's grid. That's the algorithm. Is there anything else more to say about that? Uh, we can close this tab now. Um, I think it's just time to start adding. And actually, let's just make sure that our tests are currently working. Look at that. Flying colors, all passing. So let's go to our tests, and, or actually let's go to top 10, and we're gonna, what is it? We're, we started at 140, so we're like half an hour into the stream. Let's see how quickly we can get through um, all of these top 10. So, uh, rainwater, let's, let's go back to the top of this, because it's important for folks to, is this gonna make me log in? It is not, fantastic. So I've covered this in my very first talk that I ever gave at C++ Now. You're given an integer sequence representing an elevation map. So these integers represent this sort of elevation map. And it asks if it's terrain, how much water can this like elevation map contain? So the solution to this is you want to do a left scan from the left, uh, like a left max scan. Uh, then you want to do a, a right max scan from the right. You want to take the minimum of each of those two things and uh, and then you just want to basically subtract that from your uh, initial sequence. So let's go to Jello, solve this live. We've got our list. First things we want to do is a, a max scan. Um, ooh, first bug. List index out of range. Let's just go print some info. Uh, print length, actually just print self dot n. And what do we think? Print start and print level times two. It's probably got to be start, right? Um, Four zero zero. Oh, we're in the equal vert case. Okay. Why would we be in the equal vert case? Print uh, print s as well. I think it's because this is initial call. Um, so if we set initial call to false here, I mean, that does seem to fix it. I don't know if it's exactly what we want to do. So that works, but did I break anything? I did not. Ship it, folks. The beauty unit tests. Uh, get add. And actually, I guess we should add this as a test as well. Um, so this is, ooh, ooh, yeah, 
Interesting. This one doesn't even have. Hmm. So really it's like this forms a unary function and then arguably you could say that this is, it should be a, a, a vertical line and M for monadic function application. Is it worth adding that? I think it's fine the way it is for the moment. I mean, we can think about fixing that later. So unit test, max scan. So we know monadically it's going to be nothing. What will it be dyadically? Dyadically, it's also just going to be h1, and it's going to ignore the second argument. Yep. Um, so a bit of an interesting, interesting unit test there. Uh, we do not want this. Small fix. All right, back to solving this problem. We've got max scan. Now that works. Now we also want to do a reverse max scan, which is going to be a reverse max scan followed by a reverse, um, which now you can see it's scanning from the right. So we've got a reverse max scan and how do we want to do this? We want to do this if we add a monadic separator, that's going to form a unary function. And then if we take the min of our max scan, this should form a unary, binary unary, which is going to be the phi combinator, aka a monadic fork from APL, which it did not. Maybe we actually don't need the monadic separator. Hmm. Why didn't that work? Quick, quick. One, one. Do you need a dyadic separator? Oh, I did not. Good call. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's the benefit of streaming. So let's see if my initial. Yes, except there's another bug. Um. So this is right, B combinator, H1, B combinator. So this all forms a unary, this is a one. This should be pointing to max scan. So this is correct as well. However, this should be, so maybe I don't need the separator once again. Mm. Wah, wah. All right, we're going to cheat. I solved this problem before. Um, supposedly, it works. OK, it does work. This is just a bug. Right, this is an easy fix. So, I think. Uh, it is only looking ahead two spots. So this is actually, I have like a to-do to clean this up. So if we go to draw here, um, I've got these Combinator offset and combinator arity, and I'm pretty sure these things can be the same thing, but um, note that there's no phi in this list. So like at a certain point, when you have a combinator, you need to know how many of these do I need to look ahead, and currently 
phi is only looking ahead one function, but phi is a triadic function, so you need to look ahead two functions. So I'm pretty sure the fix for this is just putting this in here. And that is exactly it, folks. Um, so actually, let's add this. Let's add this as a, as a test. Um, isn't this fun? We'll add it down here. Ooh, it should go with the longer tests. Um, so I believe this was B, B, uh, phi. So now let's play the game of what is this dyadically? Um, dyadically, this is still going to be B, B, B. Um, min will temporarily... Uh, take the min. So if we go negative one, when we get just to the min, everything will become negative one here. But once we add the max scan, a one, two, one, I'm actually not sure how that's going to evaluate. Um, let's see if I'm right. So yeah, this is what I expected. Right after the min, it's going to use this. That's the first time this negative one gets used. Then after the max, it's going to use, I don't actually know this one, but then max scan is then going to operate on this. So it's going to be, yeah, that checks out. B, B, delta B. Tricky though. Wasn't able to solve that without actually evaluating it. That checks out though. Um, and now let's get rid of our negative one, go back to solving this problem. And at this point, we want to subtract from our initial list. And this is where you need to, uh, yeah, a minus will work. But then if you do a summation here, it's not going to work. So that's why you need the monadic separator. And there you go. And then you've got your full solution. Um, so we can go here, unit test. Ooh, we need to kick this out a bit. And this is going to be BB. Sigma checks out because there's an internal W combinator and then a B combinator at the end. Yep, yep, yep. And once again, oops, not what I meant to click. Once again, how is this going to work dyadically? Uh, you know what? I'm too lazy to. Uh... This is going to be different. BB, delta B, delta B. I mean, we could check that, but. Ah, uh, we got we got like nine problems to get through, so and only a limited amount of time. Um, get status. Get diff. So get add. Get commit. I think it's for tests. It's heavy. Plus sign, and then. Um, small fix plus test for top 10, number one. Um, and let's see if that actually, yeah, a little plus sign there for the tests. And... Oh right! If you if you if you put a number sign in front of a number, that's a shortcut for issues. So don't do that in the future. Moving on to problem number two. Actually, you know what? Let's do an easier one. Let's do. Uh, well, actually, what are the ones? Maybe we'll skip the ones that. 
So I've already added nine and five. Okay. Um, let's do number six. Because six is easy. So six is max gap. I don't even need to um, open up the problem description for this. Max gap is basically you're given a unsorted list of numbers. And you need to determine... Ooh, don't do that. Don't do that, folks. Um, you need to determine what is the maximum gap if you sort the list of numbers. So obviously, the first thing you do is you sort. Uh, the second thing you do is you make a call to what in Jelly is called increment, but I stole the name from the Q language called deltas, which is the uh, difference between adjacent elements. And that gives you those differences, and then you just take the maximum uh, of those differences. And this is very simply all monadic functions, so it's just going to be a BB. Look at that. Fantastic. We come here, so that is unit test and BB. And so this one should be pretty easy. So if we add a uh, negative one here, sorts monadic, it'll ignore it. Deltas is monadic, it'll ignore it. Max R is monadic, it'll ignore it. So this is just going to be a BB still, which is the case. Uh, so. BB, this is number six. Ooh, that's kind of irritating. Huh. Actually, let's just do it this way. Uh, align with that. Ooh, that is very dissatisfying. But what can you do? Um. Tests, all passing, get diff, and uh, we will get add, we will commit, get rid of our bug, and test for top 10, number 6. So now we're done, 1, 5, 6, 9, let's do number 7. So number 7 is the exact same problem. Um, but instead of asking for the max gap, it's asking for the max gap count, a.k.a. how many uh, of those max gaps at that value are there. That's a bad way of describing it. So in this case, if we just look at our gaps, all of these are unique, and so the maximum of this only occurs once. But if we were to change this to be 20 and 15, the answer is now going to be three because we've got uh, two fives. Ooh, is my answer, is my solution incorrect? My solution might be incorrect. Um, and so, hmm. oh, right. I deleted a two. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Professor G. Uh, so it should be three. And so there are a number of ways you can do this. Um, Typically, the way that uh, I would do this is with a S combinator or sigma combinator, where basically you can go um, equals and max R. So this is going to be a B combinator here, which is going to form a unary function. This is a binary function, and this is a unary function. So in the monadic case, if we get rid of this, this is going to form the phi combinator, which is basically, where is, is it going to be? Yeah, it's going to be the phi combinator. So it's going to check uh, how many maximums do you have? How many values are equal to the maximum? So sure enough, B combinator, phi combinator, and somehow this is a zero? Or do we need to do a separator here? Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to do a separator here because why? because it's going to check, it's going to perform the maximum on your initial list otherwise. Uh, so you need the monadic separator in order to basically, it's kind of the equivalent of a, a duplicate in the middle of your sequence in a Wewa expression. You need to save this, you want to perform the maximum on the deltas, not on the initial list, because otherwise you're always referring back to that initial list. So if you do this, 
Now all you have to do after this is a sum, and that'll give you your answer. This is how I would do it typically in APL, J, BQN, and friends. However, there is a function in Jelly called index max, which gives you the indexes of all your maximum uh, values. And then once you have those maximums, you don't actually care, you can just get the length. And I think that's how I solved it previously. Let's go check. Yeah, that is exactly the case. Um, so we love that. Unit test. Um, and I wonder, is it worth adding Is it worth adding an algorithm advisor for that? No, not really. Not really. Um, so the answer for this is going to be BBBBB. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be BBB as well, because whenever you end up with a series of monadic functions, you end up just ignoring uh, not. You just end up ignoring your second argument. Right? So, seven in the books. Kill this. Run the tests. They're all working still. Get diff. Uh, rough check. For number seven. Good to go. All right, which one are we going to solve next? We're flying through these. We're halfway done. Technically, there was already two done. Um, Let's solve Ocean View. Ocean View is uh, actually, let's do Sushi for Two. So, I mean, Sushi for Two is a hard problem to explain. If you haven't seen one of my talks, this is one of my favorite problems of all time. Um, new al algorithms in C23. There we go. This is the better version of the talk. Although, I mean, this one has like six times as many views. Um, this is the better version though. So go watch this one if you're gonna watch it. Anyways, at a certain point in this talk, I describe Sushi for Two, one of my favorite programs of all time, or uh, problems of all time. Basically, you're given a list of ones and twos which represent fish, and you need to figure out the maximum sushi that you and your friend can eat. And the requirements are you and your friend have to eat the same number. You each only like one of the types of sushi, you have to grab a contiguous set of sushi, and uh, it needs to be partitioned. So like, it all has to be all blue and then all brown, or all brown and then all blue. And they have to have the same number, and it has to be contiguous. So kind of confusing, I went through that quickly. Um, but the way that you would solve this in uh, a language like Jelly, first let's get our list of uh, sushis. And the basic idea is, is you want to first do something. Uh, you want to you want to group each of these into basically the contiguous values, which is exactly what group is for. And then you want to get the length of each of these. So you can go group length each. Look at that though. We've got uh, two different algorithm advisors saying, hey hey hey, if you're doing group length each, you can just do group length. So note now we have the length of all of our uh, sequences. And we don't need to call three different things for this. We can just call one thing group len. So now we've got now we've got basically the contiguous, you know, bluefish and brownfish. And so now what we want to do is we want to do a n-wise reduction where n is equal to 2, aka prior, which is what we added in jellyfish. And the binary operation that we want to perform is minimum. We want to figure out what's the minimum of each of the adjacent values. So if we do that, a min prior, you end up with um, you can kind of ignore this one. Uh, this is what the advanced trace skipping, like this is an unnecessary evaluation because the min should be with the prior here. So it's you're gonna end up with one less value than you had before and the minimum of one and two is one, the minimum of two and one is one, the minimum of one and three is one, the minimum of three of four is three, and then the minimum of four and one is one. And basically, whatever your maximum value in this list is the maximum that each of you can individually eat. So you wanna take the sequence of three, brown fish and four blue fish. Uh, but note that your friend can't eat the fourth blue fish because you each have to eat the same amount. So that's what the min prior does. 
So once you've done a min prior, all you need to do is a max reduction, and then you just want to multiply this by two, and you're done. Um, pretty fantastic. So this is a uh, h1 here forming a unary function with the ny's reduction where n is fixed to 2, aka prior. That's going to be a unary function followed by a unary function equals a b combinator. This is a unary function, so it's another b combinator. And at the very end here, we have a times 2, which is going to be a delta combinator. But note, it forms a unary function uh, because we're providing it the second argument already of 2. So we put the little p there to mean partially applied. Fantastic. Uh, glad that there were no bugs here. Let's go back to this and sushi for two is actually a problem we already did. So, well, there you go, folks. We didn't need to do that one. Um, but it was my favorite problem of all time, basically. So still great that we did it. And uh, I just love group lang, fantastic. Uh, min prior, also fantastic. Wasn't double one of the built-in functions in Jelly? Does it work if you use it here? Holy smokes. Professor G dropping knowledge in the chat. It is definitely a function. Um, fantastic, folks. Look at that. Saving a character. So what are we going to do here? We already added this, but we are going to go to, it's not open, algorithm. We're going to add this to our advisements um, times two. And so like you forget this stuff, right? I forget it all the time. This is the beauty of these little advisements. And so now we close this. Go back to my initial solution, and it's going to go pop up. Um, you can use double. And then uh, everyone in the future will get the advice of Professor G. And that is fantastic. Um, so let us, and we can leave the original test in. Or should we leave the original test in? Actually, what we'll do is we will move this test up here. Um, actually. How are we doing this? Let's, let's copy the test. That's so awesome. Thank you, Professor. Uh, that was, that's freaking fantastic. And actually, and so this is kind of the thing though, right? Like uh, Jello, don't get me wrong, fantastic. The teachability of this tool is amazing if I don't say so myself. However, like it's defeating some of the purpose of, of uh, you know, what jelly is for, because double is longer than times two, the same way that add one is longer than plus one. However, uh, for the purposes of jelly or jellyfish programming, uh, it is great. And so now this is going to be, uh, is it BBBBB? Yeah, just three Bs. It's going to be the same thing over here. And we need to line this stuff up. Ooh, look at that. And because we got rid of the delta P, these all line up. So nice. So, so, so nice, folks. Um, we run the tests. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, let's run rough quickly. Nothing to fix. So this is technically going to be recycle. Uh, and it's going to be heavy. Was it plus sign? And we go uh, cleanup plus better, what was this, SF2, yeah, sushi for two, which is a top 10, five, top 10, number five, solution, push it, fantastic, um, yeah, which one are we going to do next, all right, we're still halfway through, what time is it, 2.36, we're doing great, we're doing great, we got an hour and a half left, we can get through these. Um, we need to come back here. We need to go to top 10. Let's do, I want to do these three last. So let's do ocean view. I want to do these three plus TCO. So let's do ocean view next, which is number 10. Um, so let's go back here. Ocean view is basic. Actually, let's take a look. They might have, actually, ocean view doesn't have a link. Um, or does it? It does have a link. Ocean view. Ooh, this is a poorly formatted thing. Ooh, it doesn't have a visualization though. But basically, it says once again you're given a in, a list of integers which represent some buildings. Uh, so for the four two three one example, 
if we go to JS Paint, um, you can think of this as basically, ooh, that's not good. You can think of this as like, here's our height four, here's our height two, here's our height three, and here's our height one. And the question is asking, it's very similar to Skyline, whereas Skyline was asking, you know, it, it had uh, basically, you, if you're standing here, how many buildings can you see? So in, in this case, can we, what are we, my phone is blowing up here. Um, can we, and I guess actually we should, ha we should have this on just in case. Um, so in this case, Skyline would give you one because the only building you can see here is, is the first one. But if you were to reverse this sequence, you'd be able to see this one, this one, and this one. So your answer would be three. So Ocean View is a very similar problem, but what it's asking is how, what are the indexes of the buildings that could see the ocean here? So number two cannot see the ocean because it's blocked by number three. But every other building, you know, and imagine that like the ocean is kind of, you know, infinite up here. There's, there's no worry. Uh, and it's assuming you're at the top of the building. So this one, this one, and this one. So basically it's the same idea. We're going to end up reversing our sequence, doing a max scan, but then we want the indices of those, of those buildings. Um, so very similar to the skyline problem, but it is slightly different. So in this case, we have four, two, three, one, and the answer is going to be, uh, oh yeah. What are the, what are the, is it zero indexed? Do, do, do. Uh, the ants, that's not it. The answer is going to be, yeah, so it's zero index, zero, two, and three. And so if we do this, first we want to do a reverse max scan and reverse. And that's going to do reversal uh, here. Then we do our max scan. Then we reverse back. And now we want the indices of the values that are equal to the initial sequence, right? So if we do a equals, and I think we just leave it like that, we then get the indice, the abelian mask that represents the indices that are uh, the buildings that can see the ocean. So now, if we just call uh, index, that doesn't work, because we need to separate this with a monadic chain, and then we're good to go. Is that the solution I have? This seems shorter than... Uh, Sub one, why is it sub one? Oh, right, because index is a, a one indexed function, which is too bad. I mean, in some cases it's too bad, in other cases it's not. What about duplicates of the height? Uh, yeah, what does the question say? Doo -doo -doo. So, two, 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 two. Hmm. So this solution is wrong. Good uh, observation. So if we change this to two, 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 we are gonna get every single one, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Uh. Also, too, I missed the last comment. Hey, I just want to say that you're the reason I stumbled into array languages. I don't plan my career around them, but they're really fun. Thank you for showing me that. Absolutely. I also, I mean, my career is a little bit sort of tangentially related to them now, but um, my biggest thing is like uh, it gives you a whole new way to solve problems that you can do in basically every language. Um, so... greater than versus equals a greater than scan though is going to immediately turn your first value into a boolean and then you're doing some kind of crazy boolean versus value um the only time like uh greater than or like basically like if you're using a predicate binary function AKA like a, an equality comparison or not equal to or less than or greater than, those only make sense on, uh, at least in my head, on Boolean arrays. So like for, for instance, if we do a greater than scan, like, you know, what does this end up meaning? Basically, 
two is not greater than two is not less than two, so you get a zero. But then zero is not less than two, so you get a one. It's, it's just like you're comparing the the intermediate value that you're storing is a boolean that you're comparing with integers. So that doesn't really make sense. Uh, well, let's think. Um, you've got, and actually, let's go back to let's go back to a better example. So four, two, three, three, one. So we want the this one to disappear, but we still need the indices, so we can't do any kind of deduplication thing. Instead of index, just use in, instead of equals index, just index. Um, index works on a Boolean sequence though. Because like what you kind of want, you kind of want to do like a unique, but then the uniqueness destroys your ability to get the indices. Uh, so you, you need to keep it in this kind of state and then just erase. You know what you really want? You want unique mask. Uh, APL has a function called unique mask. I do not, my computer can no longer find ride. Um, that's all right, we'll go to tryapl.org. So in this case, we've got four, two, three, three, one, or something like that. So we go reverse uh, max scan, max, uh, max, Scan, reverse, missing right argument. Oh, <laughs> too many Ray languages, forgetting how to do this. And then you have a function called unique mask, which I do not even know how to type. There we go. And this is going to give you, and actually you want to call this unique mask before you call the final reverse. And this is what you want. And then from here, you can go uh, where, which is what we're calling uh, IDX indices. Um, uh, I think the jelly lowercase i works, but I don't know what your jello name is. Um, tokens. Lowercase i. I mean, let's turn uh, this on. This is not really, how do we, uh, I don't have it. I don't have it. Let's go find it. Lowercase i. Find the first index of element y in list x or zero. This is a dyad though. Index of? Let's go take it for a spin. Index of. Um, let's keep it like this and then go, but so if it's dyadic, index of, of what? Um, if I make it a dyadic chain, um, isn't there actually a quick here? This is going to break stuff if I add this, but I know that they have the C combinator. It's the at symbol. Um, swap, no. Uh, make a monad from a dyad. So the back tick is the W combinator. 
I mean, we can go add that, see what happens. It's gonna probably gonna break my combinator tree, but we're just gonna call this W because that's what it is. Add the back tick, add a comma. So now, if uh, we add back tick, no, we called it W, didn't we? Um, I mean, they actually, the combinator, this still works. But it did not turn this into, so actually, let's just uh, make this a delta P and add index of 3, index of 3, 1. Ooh, did not like that one bit. Well, let's... Uh, Let's just make one three an argument over here. I do not understand this index of function. What is i underbar? Actually, let's just look. So what is we call this a uh, we call this unique? Ooh, what's this? Loop. Nope. Um index. So let's just look at all the index functions. We've got shortest permutation, index of permutation. Nope, nope, nope. The first find the first index of element y. So I think it only works for 1 argument, which is a scalar. Return the element of y at index x percent m base decompression ooh find the first index come back of sublist y within list x mm that's not exactly what we want though element of y at multidimensional index x nope permutation permutation nope Ooh, what's that? Nope. So they don't have. Let's go to Bacon Crate. Why? God damn, man. Stop giving me ads. Don't show again. These browsers, man, are all selling out. Um, how would you do a unique mask I mean BQN has unique mask I didn't know that BQN had unique mask yeah I mean you could I think there's actually a quick, a, there's a quick, I recall seeing this, that there is like a, um, it might be over here, each, loop, loop. No, so it's got to be over here. Let's uh, just search for each. Yeah, map a link over its right argument. So, I mean, there's probably a way to do it. What are we at? 251. Let's, uh, let's put a pin in this. And um, for now, we will just commit the wrong solution. But we'll put a little to do, and if we've got time, we'll come back to this. Um, but interesting, I mean, it's a very good observation on uh, on your part. Um, and actually, that is is I keep forgetting this. That's consistent with what I put. Yeah, it looks like it. Unit test. And 
That works. I do not have the energy to think about what this will mean in the dyadic case. So we're just going to grab whatever it is. And actually, are all of these... Yeah, we've basically done all of the single answer ones because a lot of these have multiple solutions. Um, nope. Works again. Uh, I guess we did add index of. That is not <laughs> what I meant to do. Uh, test for top 10, 10 solution. All right, so now we are down to two, three, four, and eight. Ads? I don't use uBlock or UBO. I mean, I'm on. I'm. On, I'm just on Opera, so I haven't installed installed anything. But uh, I clicked some buttons at the beginning to, you know, they've got some options here that basically say. Um, I thought there were some options at the beginning. Block ads, yeah, I've got that turned on. Uh, but apparently they're still gonna serve me garbage. Anyways, let's do MCO, MCO first. Um, MCO is maximum consecutive ones, also one of my favorite um, problems of all time. So the answer to this one is obviously going to be three because we've got three maximum ones here. And this the, several different solutions for this. Um, one of them is split at zero. And then you can length each over these, which of course it's going to say, hey, there's actually a single character for that. You can just go len each, uh, except I need to not type <clears throat> a slash at the end of this. Um, Ooh, that's not, mm, I guess it is dyadic function application. It's fine. <clears throat> and then uh, once you do this, you just get the, the max. Uh, so that's one thing you can do. You know, another alternative solution, instead of lengthening each, you can sum each, um, which will give you the same thing. Uh, although it's going to be one character more. So this is the, I think this is the first solution that we want to do. Um, we can confirm that uh, that is exactly what we have here. And really, what I want here, and maybe we should take a break. I mean, it's 2.55. We should we do a digression and do some jellyfish programming and <clears throat> see if I can implement part. But really what I want is I want a partition function similar to APL's partition. But really what I want is the um, WeWa version that takes a higher order function. So I want to be able to part. So if I, if I had partition, I could just go part. And technically I would need, that's the thing is actually, this would be a dyadic function that I wouldn't have to call like a W combinator because that's how it works monadically. This would just get applied. And this would give you basically only the ones. And I could then design a function that, called part that, or the same part that takes, it's technically would be a quick. Part would be short for partition that takes a function. So then I could have len part, and then of course I would just hard code something to be even shorter. But then with length part, I could just go len part max r, and that would be your solution. But then I of course, because this is so common, could just make a single glyph, and then you'd have a two character solution. First part len is basically gonna give you the length. So it's, it's, it's very similar to group len, but instead of giving you the lengths of the zeros as well, it's going to drop the zero. So you're just going to end up with one, three, and two, which is the behavior if you go to uh, WeWa. 
and you click on the partition function and you go over here, note that it says keys less than or equal to zero will be omitted. And I, I love the behavior of this. Um, you kind of want, like, because we already have group and group len. Now I want a version like this one called part and part len that do the same thing. Um, and this comes up so often uh, in my experience. Anyways, we don't have it, so we're stuck with this uh, split len max r. So let's, uh, you know, copy paste this. And this is 2.1. So unit test and <clears throat> and this is going to be 2.1 because we're going to have another solution and this is a dbb let's actually let's see so what is this going to be dyadically dyadically groups on each max r is the same thing uh is the same length, right? Yeah, let's... Yeah, because if you're summing, you're good to go. So group length... Uh... Actually, so you can't do group length. It's group... Yeah. Sum each, and then... Max R. It is... Actually, what is the... Yes, it is. It is. I almost kind of like that better. In fact, I definitely like that better. I mean, uh, I, th I don't understand why, yeah, um, Professor's pointing out that this is two characters. I don't understand what, why, you know? There's a bunch of, there's other diacritics like circumflex and accent that could have been used with these letters. I don't, I don't know why Dennis went to this. I don't even know how to pronounce this. Let's go ask ChatGPT. Um, how do you pronounce this symbol? is called a ligature, and it's the combination of the O and E. It's often pronounced as a single sound, like the E in her or bet. Okay. Yeah, so I don't even, it's not even pronounceable. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know why they did this, but I like this. Um, I like this a lot nicer, this is a lot more. So what should we do? Let's just add a 2.3. Actually, a 2.0, a 2.1, .1, a 2.3. Um, so this is going to be a 2.3. OE as in sir, or O double dot as in Sean. I mean, I don't speak the language that, uh, <laughs> that that's coming from. One thing which may be relevant to jellyfish is that jelly has only 256 unique single characters. So that one car is one byte for code golfing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I could care less about that. But it's good to know that that's like a motivation for, for jelly at least. Um, so yeah, let's go back here. So this is BB, and this is going to be BB as well in the dyadic case. So basically, I think the rule of thumb is anytime you have a ultimately a BB combinator tree, or I guess it's called a combinator chain sequence, um, it's going to be the same. And DBB, if we go back to our old solution, in the dyadic case, this is actually, I think, could be pretty weird. This is going to be two, two, zero which is going to map to something. Could actually break. Never mind, it's the same thing. Is that correct? Nobody knows. And 
Our alternative solution to this, sorry, that was French. Uh, what does it say? Sorry, that was French colon sister, German colon pretty. That's all good. Um, so there's an alternative way of solving this problem, <clears throat> which uses a scan. And the way that it works is if you do, if you if you do a rolling, you know, plus scan, which you know, algorithm the advisor is going to tell you that we have a single character for this, aka what NumPy and pandas they call cumulative sum, aka cum sum, but I think that is the most horrific name for a function ever. Um, Q calls this sums. So they have if you pre if you post fix an S onto a lot of their uh, operations, so like prod and prods, max and maxes, min and mins. I really like that. And also, I've never actually noticed, I've never explicitly mentioned this, but the R at the end of um, functions that don't have a name for their reduction, that's what the R is. So like S here stands for sum scan, R here stands for min scan, or, or max, or not max scan, max reduction. So um, I don't like, you know, there's a bunch of, in APL, you've got symbols and operators for reduce and scan, so you don't need to worry about this. But in languages like Haskell that don't ha that are not symbolic, what do you call the reduction? So what they do is this is their binary operation, uh, you know, binary op, and then they've got another name called maximum, and this is their name for their uh, max reduction. And you just have to remember this stuff, and it's kind of silly. And other languages have like similar similar things. Um, and so I, I really like this, what, what Q did with their, you know, specializations for scans. They just said, we've got maxes, we've got sums, we've got prods. And so I do the same thing with reduces now, max R, uh, min R. I still have the specialization for like sum and prod, uh, but for the ones where there is no special name, that's what the R means. Anyways, uh, if we go back to, here's our plus scan, and you can see that this gives you basically running sums. But what we wanna do is we wanna zero, we wanna reset the running sum anytime you hit a zero. And so you can do that by basically uh, multiplying as your uh, middle binary operation and uh, resetting with the pi combinator, aka uh, the R function. And if we do this, I believe we have to do this to reset. And now you can see that we've zeroed out anytime we hit a zero. And once we've done this, we can just make a call to our max reduction and we've got our solution. And, you know, you might not like this better than the uh, group sum each max r, but if you're trying to parallelize code, using functions like group and stuff are a lot harder to parallelize than a scan is. Um, and so this on like, you know, hardware like, you know, GPUs, which is the company I work for, um, is a lot better. This is wrong though. Um, so we are going to put unit test this and we're not going to fix this right now because we're, we only got maybe 55 minutes left in the stream. So we're going to call 2.2 and we're going to do this as a to do. Um, I mean, so the solution is correct, but this combinator, so what should this be, right? This is, this is the bug that we filed, right? Because scan is a, is a quick, aka higher order function that's expecting a binary function, somehow Jelly knows to parse this as a dyadic function. But my rule set says, oh, when you're in the monadic case and you see a binary function at the top, treat that as the W combinator and it falls apart from there. Uh, so we'll fix that at a later date. Actually, no, so we can, we can still, what am I, oh no, yeah, we, this will break because we're checking, our unit tests are testing on the combinator chain sequence, so uh, we gotta fix this. But the other two worked, and uh, if we go, look at that, adding the tests. I mean, we should do a little, little rough. Ooh, one fixed. What do we, what do we fix? Ooh, just some spacing probably. Oh, actually, no, it got rid of. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, I think if we go no QA. Mm. 
Let's go over to our, this is where I know I put some no QAs in. Do I need to actually specify, I thought? So maybe um, it needs to be the first thing after. So this is just for like turning off runt rough linting, but maybe it needs to be the first thing. What the? After the comment? So let's just do rough check. So yeah, now, that's kind of irritating though. Uh, commit, we want just this one, and this is for top 10, number two, tests, plural. So we're, ooh, except, we've got three, four, and eight left. So, I mean, I said, should we take a break? We didn't take a break to go do the part len. Maybe we'll save that for another stream some other night. Um, but yes, the, the reason that we left, we left these is because now LCIS, Cadanes, and TCO are all kind of just variations of this problem. Um, so LCIS, we haven't solved yet, but that's the one that we showed at the beginning, right? Um, and we will actually type out the sequence this time. So this should be, it should result in three. So if we do a less than prior, now we've got, we basically turned our sequence of integers into a Boolean sequence. And so basically anytime you can, you have this like kind of scanning problem, anytime you can turn this sequence into a Boolean sequence, you're now back to MCO, maximum consecutive ones. Um, and so we just dyadic separator, scan, max R, and we're done. And in this case, because we want, we've, we've shortened each of our sequences by one because of our, the use of prior, uh, our final integer is gonna be one less than the actual length of the sequence. So we have to do a, add one at the end. And this is where I like, you know, this is the example in the readme. It's so cool that this combinator tree now recursively works. So maybe at some point we'll add color to this, but I actually think it looks totally fine. And we've already got so much color on the screen. Um, so yeah, this is our, this is our second, is this our second or first solution to, this is our first solution. A little inconsistent that the scan is the second one for MCO and the first one, and what is it? It's the second one. So this should probably be, we should move this to be the second solution. Um, yeah. Looks like a folded lambda diagram. I do not know what that is, but uh, I'll take your word for it. Um, so this is BBB. Although, because this one's so complicated, does it actually still result in a BBB? Still results in a BBB. Oh yeah, we've, we've forgotten to align these. So this is 3.1. We might go change it later, the order. And then the next solution is similar to what we were doing before, less than prior, split at zero. And I mean, now we can kind of do two different things, right? We can do the len each add one, or we can go back and do the group sum each add one. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's, let's do, let's put them both in. Uh, 
this is going to be 3.3. And if we go back to our split solution, ooh, this one's different because we're, yeah, we've got this value in here. Um, Is this right? This forms Hmm. This is technically wrong. Because because this is partially applied even though epsilon, you know, if we go to our combinator chain. Ooh, epsilon's not even here. Epsilon's not even here. Why not? This is one, this is dyadic. So this is a one, two, zero. Actually, what are we doing here? That's not correct. We're missing, we're missing a, we're missing a, a max R. Okay, that's better. Did the other one have a max R in it? It had the sum each, which was what we wanted. Have I seen star soul? Nope. Is this supposed to do anything? Looks neat. We'll take a longer look at a, <laughs> a later date. So sick
Um, one, two, zero. So this is a one, two, zero. And it's definitely not epsilon. It's definitely not epsilon because A would be our binary function split at. E would be the zero. The P would be the fact that zero is provided. But the less than prior forms a unary function. So... I know that I, I did this for a reason, though, because at a certain point, this was not like this. But why, why are we, we're in a, oh. We're, <laughs> What are we doing, folks? What are we doing? <laughs> I had the negative one in there. Um, yeah, this is correct. <clears throat> Sorry, we just wasted five minutes there for no reason. Go back to tests. And... Is this L this is L C S? Yeah, yeah. And now this is gonna be delta P triple B, <clears throat> which I agree is the case. And the dyadic case is, I believe, correct. Uh, although I'm just we're gonna we're gonna take its word. I'm not gonna think about it too hard. <clears throat> Kill this. I'm trying to run the There we go. Ooh, you know what I need? I need, a, I need some caffeine right now. Um, <clears throat> we need to call this up. Heavy plus, this is LCIS number three. All right, I'll be back in two seconds. <clears throat> But I have, I'm actually not too hungry, and I'm gonna, I'll do, I'll have a smoothie in once the stream is done. Wait, is my stream frozen? It is not. Um, okay, we're getting there. We've got four and we've got eight left, so let's do number four. Four is also, I mean, all of these are my favorite problems of all time. Four is Cadane's algorithm, which is, once again, very similar to maximum consecutive ones and longest contiguous increasing sequence, um, a.k.a. LCIS. But Cadane's is given a list of integers, both positive and negative. What is the longest contiguous sequence that yields the greatest sum? So, you know, for a very simple example like this, it's going to be 7. Or, or what is the sum, more accurately? Yeah, You don't need to actually care about what the subsequence is. You just need to care about the sum. Uh, because if we try to include this positive 1 here, 
the negative two is going to overwrite it. However, if we have a negative two over here and then a three over here, it's now going to be eight because we get the seven from here and it's worth it to go and grab the three because we'll still gain one. So if we do this, it's basically the exact same thing. We wanna do a plus scan um, to give us our running sum, but we wanna reset any time our running sum dips below zero, basically. Um, and so if we put max here with the same pattern, um, now, did that work? I think I might need to do the, yeah, this is what we want. So now you can see uh, we reset at this point because our, our running sum went below zero. So we know it's not worth it to keep this prefix here. We restart our sum at three, then we get to seven, three plus four, then we drop down to negative two, which could be beneficial if we keep going, and sure enough, uh, we get eight. And so if you go max r after this, you should get your solution. And it is so beautiful, so beautiful in my opinion, that the difference between maximum consecutive ones and Cadane's algorithm is a single binary operation if you're making use of the phi one combinator, uh, which this is one of these cases where it breaks, which is, which is heartbreaking because really what this should say is phi one combinator, H1, because it forms with the quick and then B. So it's really a phi one B, um, which actually we're not gonna be able to add the test for because this is wrong. Um, although we could add the test and just have it be failing. Um, so beautiful, so beautiful. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So unit test. Um, although I don't actually know what the, uh, I don't actually, actually we need, we need the, the subscript as well. That's, that's what it's going to be. And in the dyadic case, I have no idea. <laughs> so we'll just put it to do, but this is going to fail, right? Uh, four to do. And if we run test now, it's going to go pop which fair enough. We can add a failing test. That's fine. Or should we just comment it out? Maybe we'll just comment it out. Why do I do this? Use the last, ooh, not what I wanted. Use the last, and so this is number four? Number four. Which brings us to last but not least, the fourth problem of the category of these kind of scans. And there's three different ways to solve this. This might be pedagogically the best algorithm. I plan to give a talk at some point. What's wrong, why is this? Uh... It says that it's kind of frozen, but it's not. Um, so uh, TCO, AKA three consecutive odds. You're given a list of numbers and you want to return whether or not there are three consecutive odds or not. Uh, so in this case, you should return true because one, three, five are all odds. So uh, the first way, I mean, cons because we've been solving it this, this way recently, we can convert these to odds. And then what do we have here? A Boolean sequence once again. and in the past, we've been trying to find the maximum sequence, um, but basically we can just use MCO to uh, solve this. So once again, plus times R scan max R. And in this case, we just want to check, is this you know greater than two or greater than or equal to three? And we're done. So that's our first, that's our first solution. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful folks. Um, And we're gonna grab this. And I have no idea what this does dyadically. It is 
different. Which I guess makes sense. Anytime there's a delta, you're expecting that to be an epsilon. So that checks out. Uh, another way to solve this, um, if we clear our screen, we obviously want to start with odds, but now we can make use of uh, the split at once again, or we could do the group the group version. Ooh, did we even add that one? Did we end up adding that one? Yeah, the 3.3 and the 2.3. So this should really be three. This should really be 8.4. Uh, we can do group. We can do sum each, and we can do max r, and we can do greater than two. Kind of fun because we can actually do a bunch of stuff, right? We can check are any of these. Uh, greater than two, and then we can do an any. Um, <clears throat> and also, too, I've got my negative one here, which shouldn't be here. Yeah, we're, yeah, unfortunately, looking at the dyadic case. Um, yeah, but we're gonna, we're gonna do the, we're gonna stick to the max r greater than two. Uh, but once again, we need to get, we need to kill this. And that should change it to a delta. Um, so we're going to do this. This is going to be our, you know, uh, 8.4. It's going to be a BB delta. I guess we can just replace a B here. And actually, this is probably just going to replace with uh, B as well. We can double check that. That is the case. So now we've covered two of four solutions. The uh, second one is not using the group, but going back to using the split at. So split at zero. Once again, let's get rid of the negative one here for a second. And then we can do len each max r greater than two, uh, which is very similar, but slightly different. And we'll figure out what the order of these are in a sec. So if this is going to be delta p, delta p, I think we can just replace the epsilons here. We'll see if that works in a sec. And last but not least, which is kind of the coolest the coolest version of this. If we go back here, we can make use now of slide, which we have not been able to do in the future. So if we go slide three, this is gonna create uh, overlapping windows of three at a time. And now we can ask are there, uh, if we perform all, so are there, we wanna know are there any sliding windows where all three of the values are true? So we perform an all each, and then we follow that up with an any. Note that my algorithm advisor does not recommend. <clears throat> so let's go fix that. Because we also have a function called slide fold, where you can avoid this each by passing the correct binary operation. But we do not have that, and why not? Because we only have this for the chunk ones. So let's just add the specific, exactly specific one that I want. We want slide all each, and we want it to recommend us that we can do an and min. Do they have logical and, or do they just do they do what Wewa does and overload the um, and logical and? They do have and. Um, all right. Well, let's go do that then. It's just it's just a right. So let's go add to our tokens um, and 
and this is going to be an A. Put a comma after this. Actually, put a comma after that one. We come back here. So we want this to recommend us to be an AND slide fold. So now, kill this, reopen it. Now we will get a recommendation that says you're doing a slide three all each. This can repla be replaced with an AND three slide fold, which is brilliant, folks. Absolutely brilliant. Whoops. A, uh, and I guess the number is on the right now. So it's a AND. Was the number comes first? Yeah, the number goes after. Uh, except this needs to be a slide fold. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Actually, what do I even have? What do I even have here? Do I use a slide fold? I do use the slide fold. And I use min because min works. It doubles as the logical and in the case that you have a Boolean vector. But it's a little bit more descriptive if you actually use the and. I don't know why I didn't check for that before. And what you need to do here is just call any afterwards, which is, uh, um, this is just, this is so elegant in my opinion, um, and is going to be the fastest. The scan, very fast, but a slide fold is basically just a map at the end of the day. You're just mapping over multiple indexes, and maps are extremely parallelizable. Anyway, so let us create a test for this once again. This is definitely my favorite of the three solutions for this one. Um, and the fact that slide fold exists, I, th I don't know a single language that has slide fold and chunk fold. And these are such common operations. These kind of splitting or windowing operations and then having to perform some kind of reduction on each of those windows. This probably isn't performantly implemented in uh, Jelly. But just the fact that it exists and it could be, chef's kiss. Chef's kiss, folks. Um, uh, and this is going to be BB, which means this is going to be BB. So let's go to this. Slide fold is the first solution. So we're going to call this 8.1. 8 um, the scan is the second solution. So that's already there. That's going to be 8.2. And then the split at is the third solution. So that's going to be 8.3. Now we are going to manually line this stuff up because that's the kind of guy I am. Ooh, delta P messes stuff up. The subscript P. That still works nice. I guess if you have if you have two delta P's, it works out. And if we go and do, run our test, will it work? Did I make a mistake? I made a mistake, which is the dyadic definition of which one was it? Odd split at. So somehow, I guess I I guessed that that would be correct just by replacing it. Um, split at. But what is it really? Ah, they're B ones. So deltas become epsilons and b's become b1s. That checks out. What? Oh yeah, I gotta gotta format this one as well. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Found out. Found commented out code. Ooh. Three thirty-seven. 
tokens. Oh yeah, and we should add a, was I, was I committing that? I was in the middle of committing that. We should add a, uh, a to-do. To-do, fill these out and also um, to do add and slash all plus um, or slash any uh, advisements. Technically, we should uh, really go add an issue for it, but come at me. Woo! All right. I think, uh, technically, with that, I should have gone to issues and closed. This is the jellyfish issues. We want the jelly issues. This is done now. We can close this. I mean, technically, we've got that uh, one problem to revisit. Um, oh. Let's go back to our to-do list. So what have we done? We've done this. Maybe name? Did we did we come up with a name for the algorithm? Needs a name. Um, what do I call it? I call it currently just combinator tree. Um, yeah, separators first, quicks, and then monads and dyads. Um, Write up scan. Yeah, I don't know. We'll uh, we'll come up with something. Have I seen move the skater? Nope. The single instruction. <laughs> no way. Well, that's pretty low quality image. You got to uh That's pretty funny though. Um I say we've got we've got 20 minutes left. Let's see if in 20 minutes there's a couple different things we could do. Um so no, we did not we did not name Still need to name. Name the algo. Um, let's see if we can go implement partition in 20 minutes. We might not do it, because I gotta go after this. Um, but yeah, so here we are. This is the uh, my jellyfish fork of jelly. In case folks aren't in the know, um, I have forked jelly. Um, mostly I just added some linting stuff, but I have added one primitive so far, AKA prior, which I mentioned before. And the goal of this is just, there's a lot of crashes in jelly when you start to push it to its edge and some things that are missing. So there's one issue here, missing atoms. Um, I've implemented one Q's prior. The other one that I want right now is WeWaz partition. <clears throat> so we can technically just go and find group, um, which is what, so basically what I did for prior is I took the reduced cumulative, I guess we should get rid of these, and this is the uh, monadic case, and this is the dyadic case, and I believe the links uh, one dot call here is the second argument, and so you can see I basically just copy pasted this, created a new function with the same number of arguments, and hard coded this to be two. Is that the best way to do it? 
Who knows? Do we care? Absolutely not. And <laughs> and uh, and so that's what we're going to try and do for group. Except there are 40. So let's not do that first. Then let's go find. So what is um if we just type uh. Actually, so we go 10, iota, odd, sort, and then we do group. Um, group is this. So let's go look for that. Uh, okay. Right, because we're not searching. So group equal. So, array iterable group, if groups and groups negative one equals x. If groups and groups negative one zero equals x for x in array. Huh. Groups is empty. So if it's not empty, else append it. And then just check, is the last element, oh, because it's creating a list of lists. So it's just checking it's the head. Uh -huh. So <clears throat> we're going to call this. We're going to call this partition. And all we need is one condition here. Uh, ooh. Hmm. Well, we need a little bit more. My first thought was going to be, so if x is greater than 0, but then let's, well, let's actually just see if, if we can, uh, if that will do something. Now, if we go back to group equal and we now call this partition <clears throat> and we need a symbol for this. I, for the time being, don't really care. So we're going to go to shape catcher and I just want the capital P. Uh, let's try that again. Let's try that again. There we go. Is there a rhyme or reason? No. I just want an unused character that starts with the letter P. <clears throat> now we are going to come back here. We are actually going to need to go to tokens. This is going to be... Ooh. this Yeah, this will be fine. This is going to be a... Um, and we're going to call this part. Fantastic. So that'll work. But now we need to go to CD, CD Jellyfish and pip3 install our new changes. And actually, that's not going to work because we have to do one other thing, which is to add it here. So let's try that again. <clears throat> Come back, go to jelly, go to jello. All right, moment of truth, folks. Um, in fact, let's clear this. So we want, let's just build up a Name partition is not defined. Did you mean parition? Uh, I did not mean parition, but that's just because I spelt this wrong.
Yes, so this was what I expected. So what has happened here is that, sure, we have ignored the zeros, but because these are the same values, um, it's going to put them all in a single sequence. So if I change this to a 2 and this to a 3, now it gives me what I want. But what I want is these still to be split. So we just need to go reset. Um, we, what if we, else groups dot append and we append an empty list. So this will work now for our case. There's still something wrong with it though. Yeah. Pip. We come back. So now if we come back to this, what the blue? It did not work. It did not work. Right, 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 right. Um, <clears throat> and not groups negative one or because you can't index in. Probably painful people watching me switch directories like this each time instead of opening uh, another one to do that and tabbing back and forth. But what are we at? Nine minutes in? So, boom, now we've got it. However, this is the problem right here is that we're going to end up with empty lists when we have consecutive zeros. So, the last change that we need to make is. Um, If and that will only append it when you have a valid list. So as soon as you've done this once and you have consecutive negative numbers, you'll be good to go. Hmm. That did not work. Ooh, why am I? I totally F this up. Was someone just about I saw? Um, no, this was the initial problem. I <clears throat> don't think that groups will be harmful there. I was, I was just in the wrong branch. Or like if else branch, not, not the other kind of branch. There we go, folks. I mean, it's not going to make a difference. Adding more zeros. I mean, the, the formatting did change that time. Oh, no, it's, it's just kicking it out because I have more zeros there. And so now, if I go len each max r, we're done. Um, 
So, can we quickly add part lengths as well? So the difference in the implementation here Yeah, they're making this faster. So let's just add um, Um, sparkles add part. And let's go back over to jellyfish. I don't think this is, I still have some outstanding uh, two potentially fixable trailing white space and single quotes. So that was just introduced. Um, sparkles add part and we want the Actually, let's do it this way. And uh, actually, wait, does this? Actually, no, wait, this one, that's actually, oh, scheiße. This is not the Wiwa. Because it needs to be a quick. I mean, I think it's fine for now. It's actually not what I wanted to do though, because I wanted to. I got too excited, too carried away. I wanted to. To be able to write this. Len part max. Um, and have part be a quick here. Whereas part is just a monadic function in this case. We want part to be red and to take len as its unary operation. So like similar to how there's a, yeah, actually, because there's a chunk fold and there's a slide fold. Hmm. <clears throat> it's actually kind of interesting. Chunk fold, slide fold, which really means there could be a part fold and a group fold, but do you actually want the fold version or do you want, what would you call it, group? Hmm. 
would you call it group each? Because like length, len you can't pass to a fold function. You could construct a binary operation that just does a plus one for every element, but ideally you would like to be able to just, you know, write len and then your, your quick that applies some unary operation. So the difference, the difference being is that you would end up doing, you know, plus part fold versus, you know, sum part fold. Food for thought. Hmm. Well, I think I think this actually makes sense. We should add part, and then I need to think about these underscore fold versus underscore each. Um, operations. Yeah, let's do that. I'll think about this. Um, and actually update this. So we edit. Um, this kind of is going in the direction of being, you know, the <clears throat> this would be partition each versus, and also partition technically takes two arguments. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot to think about here. Part. Just put a question mark here. Part versus part fold versus part each. Um, so go back to jellyfish, and we'll just commit this. And then we will call it a night. Head by one commit. Right, add p part. We already did commit it, push it. All right, folks, four o'clock on the dot. We managed to do not exactly we was partition, but a version of it. I will think about this on the next stream. Uh, naming, oh yeah, trace. We gotta do this, probably next, next stream, or will I do this off stream? Trace skipping unnecessary. Basically, uh, ah, CD Jello. When you when it's evaluating all this stuff, basically, I want to parse this uh, combinator chain sequence and only show the traces that are relevant. So odd is relevant. But this split at here, this dyadic function without the zero that's coming in the expression doesn't mean anything. So if you kind of look at what is here, I want to show the one, I want to show the zero, I want to show the one, the one, and then the zero again. Once again, this dyadic operation here at the end without the two is meaningless. So basically advanced trace skipping. I just, any time that there's a trace for a step that's kind of, you know, whether it's followed by a quick or it's followed a dyadic operation being followed by a nilad, aka a scalar, that stuff should be skipped because it's it's just uh, unnecessary and obfuscates what, what the trace is actually doing. So we'll do that in a future stream. I'll think about the part each part fold versus part. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Thanks to everybody that helped, caught mistakes. And we will see folks in the next stream. I will do my best to give more notice than the two hours that I gave today. <laughs> um, yeah, have a great night, folks.